Welcome, friends, to the Monogram Kitchen. I'm at our Zunai location with part two of Ridiculous Knives. If you didn't catch part one, I'll link it in the description below. Check it out. I went to Harbor Freight and I bought two knives for less than $10. I bought this gigantic machete. Uh, one side's got a pretty sharp edge. The other side has second world's uh, uh, scary second uh, serrated blade rather because this thing is terrifying. This is what they call a survival knife Look at these two rows of teeth on this knife. I'm not sure what you can cut with that I've never seen that 30 years working around knives. I've never once seen that design um, The survival knife what I love about this knife is that if you unscrew the base you have what I can tell to be the world's least accurate compass like it doesn't really even spin. Um, yeah, it's like locked in place. And then if you dig through there, there's some other survival goodies. Fishing line, uh, hook, uh, I suppose. Left in the wild, dropped in the wild with this knife. I'm sure I would make it out alive, no problem. All right, these are not kitchen knives. This is a kitchen knife. This is the generally excellent, my favorite knife in the world, Vustoff, 10 inch chef's knife. What we're doing here today, we're comparing the difference between an excellent knife and what I presume to be terrible knives. Now, the first test I've devised is the wobble test. So what I do is put a zucchini on the end of the knife and see how much stability I have on this knife. I feel this knife has a stability of zero. This is terrible. That seems like that wouldn't be very accurate. This knife, never devised this test before. Good stability, and of course we know the Wolfstoff is perfect. It actually has a little bit of flex to it, a little bit, but not so much as to be, um, well, this. This is kind of crazy. Um, the Wolfstoff wins that, that race. All right, let's do some chopping here. You know, uh, I want to test out the serrated blade here. I brought some tomatoes along with me. Typically, I use a regular Vustoff for this, this uh, test here. Okay, so not only is it terrifying, it's also extremely dull. Okay, look at that. It just tore that apart. Let's try the, look at how much juice came out of that. This side, that's actually not bad. That's not bad. It's not as good as my Vustoff. You see how that just glides right through? Look at that, just the weight of the knife alone is enough to make it glide through. How about the machete? Okay, serrated side. It's better than the survival knife, but you hear it? A serrated knife isn't supposed to be making that sound. Okay. And that's extremely dull. For as sharp as it feels, and as dangerous as it is, it's very dull. Okay. Well, no surprises there that the, uh, that the uh, Harbor Freight $7 machete doesn't work as well as a professional chef knife by a reputable kitchen manufacturer, kitchen knife manufacturer. What about uh, the pepper test? Okay, I'm gonna cut off both ends. All right, I like to make one cut in between the spokes. I'll get my arm way up here. And the flame. What I like about the pepper test is that it utilizes all of the different knife skills. This actually isn't too bad. It's still really dull. I'm terrified. And slightly less so right now. Okay, now we're going to try some dicing of the pepper. And peppers, of course, the skin can be hard to get through, which is why I have the flesh side up. Oh, man! Ah! My finger! Okay, let's try... Let's try the survival knife. I'm telling you, these knives, they might be cool, but they, I don't think they're very safe. Let's see here. Okay. So just in pure comparison between the two, this is so much easier to use just because it's not cartoonishly large. I suppose if you're in the middle of the wilderness, you probably wouldn't have fresh peppers kicking around. I don't think they grow wild. Maybe they do. I don't know. All right. Okay, that's better. I can kind of do a little bit of a rocking motion with this one. 
a little bit. Yeah, I just, again, the problem is the serrated backside of it is a little hard to get a good pinch grip. This is not bad, actually. Um, I'm gonna say that this knife is purely a cartoon. And it's designed uh, to be something you buy because you wanna have this hanging in a hook or look intimidating. Maybe keep this in your car, so if you feel like getting mugged, you can be like, Mr. Batty, go away. Um, I tried cutting a stick with it. That was pointless. And what are you gonna do, yard work with this thing? Are you gonna go in your backyard? Are you really gonna go? Am I gonna go into the backyard of the urban homestead and take down some branches and trees with this? No, I've got way better tools. Okay, that's junk. All right, let's, let's see here if I can cut a potato. Oh gosh. All right, that's a struggle. That is, that is definitely a struggle compared to, look how this just glides right through. Oops, lost one. Um, my, my, my take on these, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm proving a point here, which is buy nice knives. And you don't have to spend a ton of money. I like my Vlistoffs, but um, you know, there's a lot of knives out there in the market that are 20 and $30 that really do the trick. Uh, I bought these uh, just because I thought they'd be fun to experiment with, and um, I gotta tell you, they're they're pretty they're pretty hard to use as a kitchen knife. Now, I, I, in all reality, I'm not a survivalist. Um, I enjoy camping, but I'm a glamper. I bring um, gourmet food and craft cocktails to uh, to any campground with me. Nor am I a backpacker because, um, well, I like the comfort of a large tent, a car, a cooler full of uh, cold beverages, so on and so forth. So if this were gonna be a knife that I was gonna go out and backpack with, would this get the trick trick done? Well, quite frankly, no, and I'll tell you why. It's too heavy, it's far too heavy as a backpacking uh, uh, utensil. I would look for something more like a bushcrafting knife, which weighs maybe a third or a quarter of this. Uh, it's much smaller, easier to pack. Um, you know, this handle with the fishing and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just gimmicky. It's fun, but it's just gimmicky. This knife, of course, lives in a kitchen. Now, I have older knives, older chef knives that I've just worn out that I use um, as a tool in my garage. I open paint cans with it, and I scrape varnish with it. I would never do that with this knife, but if this got irreplaceably damaged, you know, irreparably damaged, yeah, I wouldn't throw it out. And then this thing, it's a cartoon. Um, I'd love to know in the comments if anybody out there is using these Harbor Freight knives in their kitchen on a regular basis. I'd love to know. Um, I'd also like to know if you want to see me cook with these knives instead of just doing, well, an initial take outside of the urban homestead in, in a real kitchen. Um, is there something I, you, give me a challenge. What can I make? Make it hard. Um, make it hard on me because uh, let's, quit, let's face it. Um, when you've got great tools, cooking is easy. We all know that. Okay, friends, this is Chef Mark. I want you to click that subscribe button. Do you all know that clicking the subscribe button is free? It just shows that you're interested in my content and I appreciate it, it means a lot to me. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.